Hello viewers, welcome back. This is definitely one of the reviews I was most excited to make, if only because I was excited to learn this series would be continuing. Free was one of those shows that I always planned to get to eventually, because I'd heard so much about it, and then when I did watch it, kind of on a whim, I just fell in love. It was so much more than just another sports anime where the shipping ran wild. There were so many likeable characters, all with their own struggles and goals, and I love a good friendship story. But I definitely thought season two was going to be the end. Our main characters had graduated high school, and that's typically the stopping point for anime. But Dive to the Future picks right back up with the next swim season, and on a few housekeeping notes, you can definitely expect spoilers, and I will be sharing my review under the assumption that you're all caught up to this point, and season 3 does include characters not only from seasons 1 and 2, but from the Starting Days movie as well. But to recap just a little, Haru and Makoto are both going to college in Tokyo. Haru's college plans were still a little up in the air at the end of Eternal Summer, but he did end up finding a school willing to work with him. It's here that he meets back up with Asahi, and the three are left to wonder about the last member of their middle school relay team, though not for long. Pretty soon, it's time for the intercollegiate newcomer tournament. And it's here that they finally see Ikuya again, but there's something not quite right with their old friend sound a little familiar? He's gotten really good, but he's only competing in the individual medley, which is basically all the styles of the medley relay that our characters are so fond of, swam by one person. When they track down his new teammates, they learn that Ikuya hasn't participated in a relay since middle school, which understandably raises some red flags. A good chunk of the beginning of Season 3 is spent correcting one of the problems I had with Starting Days. Basically, the drama in that movie fell a little flat for me because it was such a small part of the overall story. They go through so much to come together as a team, but we know it won't last. Dive to the Future fills in the gap between the end of Starting Days and Season 1. For a while, everything was going great. The boys held an extra training camp over the summer so they'd be better prepared for the next season. Ikuya was the most reluctant to be part of a team, but he seems to have put aside those insecurities, for the most part. He's still got a rivalry going with Haru, but seemed more open to learning from him and competing alongside him. Unfortunately, he never gets the chance. Asahi's dad is transferred at work, and he moves again before he can even say goodbye. Then their winter break happens, and Haru has his reunion with Rin, leading him to quit swimming for a while, and Ikuya is left to see his team, that he took so long to warm up to, fall apart so quickly. Ultimately, he uses this disappointment as motivation to become more serious about his swimming than ever, and Ikuya and Natsuya leave to train in America. This is actually a good time to mention that Haru has grown up a lot since Eternal Summer, I've mentioned before that Haru's a character where the little things really matter. Like, he never says much, so you really have to pay attention to his actions and expressions to try and understand what he's thinking and feeling. And in the past, he's always had Makoto around to act as a buffer between him and the rest of the world. Makoto would always smooth things over if Haru said something rude or just straight out ignored someone who was annoying him. But now that they're in college and their lives are heading down different paths, they're still very close, but they're not as joined at the hip anymore, and you could really see Haru making an effort to put himself out there and socialize a little more in this season. I know actually making eye contact and polite conversation with the people around you sounds like the very bare minimum of what you'd expect from a functioning adult, but it was a big deal to me. I was very proud. Anyway, one thing that's always been very prominent about Haru's character is how important his friends are to him, most likely because he doesn't make very many of them. The big divide between Haru and Ikuya now actually stems from the first major act of friendship we see from Haru, ironically, the way he quit swimming because his other rivalry was tearing Rin apart. So now that Haru's gotten himself together a little bit, he's a lot more proactive about rekindling this friendship. 
Like, he did start swimming again to reconnect with Reen back in Season 1, but his actions are much more direct this time around. Which brings us to the big roadblock of this plot, which is not actually Ikuya himself, despite all his angst. No, Ikuya made a friend in their time apart, and Hiyori takes it upon himself to keep Ikuya's old friends away from him. He justifies it to himself by saying he doesn't want Ikuya to get distracted, even though seeing Haru again has already caused his progress to stall, but he's much harsher to their faces. There are a ton of new characters in Dive to the Future, which I will come back to, but Hiyori is the only one I genuinely dislike. Haru, Makoto, and Asahi can't get close to Ikuya during their competitions, so they go straight to his school, but Hiyori intercepts them there, too. It's during this confrontation that we learn a bit more about Ikuya and what he's been up to in their time apart. He was always really serious about his swimming, and apparently things only got even more intense after he moved to America. He pushed himself until he collapsed, and this near drowning left him hospitalized for a while, which has understandably traumatized him a little, but left him even more motivated to get stronger and not have to rely on anyone else. I mean, there's nothing really new about Ikuya's story. It's almost exactly what we saw from Rin back in Season 1. They each broke away from their group of friends, their safety net if you will, and found themselves overwhelmed once they were on their own. A traumatic event spurs them on until their success has become this unhealthy obsession, and it's just a matter of time until they crash and burn. And not to backtrack, but in Rin's case, I'm not talking about the race he lost against Haru back in middle school. There's one aspect to his character that I've never really talked about. His father also had dreams of being an Olympic swimmer, but had to put them on hold when he had kids in favor of a more stable job. He died in a storm when they were really young, and Rin picked up where he left off. His biggest motivation from the beginning was always to do what his dad never got the chance to. He's pretty upfront about that. And I saw this aspect of his story paralleled in Ikuya's too, with Ikuya's own near drowning. The way I saw it, the thing that really motivates them both and pushes them in that unhealthy direction is the same, the fear of dying before being able to accomplish their dreams. So Ikuya's friends see the warning signs right away this time, and rush in to let him know he still has their support and whatnot. And before I really get into my Hiyori rant, I do want to say that I don't actually have a problem with Ikuya himself. The angst got a little much at times, but he was very neutral towards the idea of seeing his old friends again. Hiyori was the one blaming everything on Haru. Ikuya had pretty much accepted that whether he did well or not was on his own shoulders. At the end of this season, I like him a little more than I did after starting days, but honestly, I'm still not super attached to Ikuya or Asahi. Which I guess makes how much I hate Hiyori a little disproportionate, but honestly, I can't remember the last time I found a character this infuriating. He's just always so smarmy when Ikuya's around, but then becomes this possessive, arrogant jerk the second Ikuya's out of earshot. The trio tries to tell him that they're old friends of Ikuya's, and they just want to make sure he's okay. And no exaggeration, Hiyori's response is literally, yeah, well I'm his best friend. And this is when he goes on to explain about everything Ikuya's gone through since he moved away, and he uses that story about how he almost drowned to rub it in Haru's face that everyone who swims with him ends up suffering in some way. And I just... no. Like, they go on later about how Hiyori's parents never had time for him and how he never knew how to smile for real until he met Ikuya, who was his very first friend. But no. There are some things you don't get to come back from, and you do not get to use your supposed best friend's trauma as leverage to make yourself feel superior to his other friends. Nothing they could have told me about Hiyori was going to make me sympathetic for him after that point. For me, his little speech in this confrontation was just a whole other level of not okay. Which honestly might be a good segue into some of this season's flaws as a whole. 
This review so far has been pretty much singularly focused on this drama with Ikuya and Hiyori, but from the very beginning, Season 3 tried to tell a little of everyone's story, and Free has officially gotten to the point where it can't keep track of everyone. Like, one of my favorite things about Eternal Summer was that, even with eight main characters all dealing with their own struggles, all the character stories were done really well. Dive to the Future has, like, 15 characters it tries to focus on, and we end up skipping around, just getting bits and pieces of everything. It really takes the impact out of most of their individual stories. I feel like Season 3 would have had to be twice as long to adequately explore everything. And though it did get a lot of focus early on, the way Ikuya's story arc wraps up was one of those things that felt a little lukewarm to me. There's one aspect that was done really well. Haru, figuring the only way he's going to get through to Ikuya is by swimming with him again, starts working one-on-one -on -one with a personal trainer, and surprises them all by swimming the individual medley in their next competition. And it was really moving. One of those things that emphasized how much Haru's friends mean to him and how much he's grown up. He's more willing to meet others on their level now, not stubbornly wait for everyone to meet him on his. But I'm not totally sold on the revelation Ikuya comes to. I mean, I really liked his little monologue about how he realizes that he was so stubbornly independent because he was afraid of being left behind again if he ever did get close to someone else. But I don't know, it just felt like there was something more eating at him that the series kind of overlooked and Hiyori's resolution was even more half-assed, but any further discussion of Hiyori is going to veer off into something else, so I'm going to come back to that. Would you believe this was only the first half of the season? Luckily, everything else can be covered pretty quickly. Unfortunately, this is because the series itself didn't cover it very thoroughly. Like I said, it's just this scramble to keep up with everyone at this point. Rei and Nagisa got two new recruits to fill up their team, as well as a new manager in training, none of whom I really have an opinion about. The writers save time by having Iwatobe and Samezuka do their training camps together. The only time the high school side of things is done really well is episode 11, the episode that focuses on their nationals tournament. All the college kids take time off from whatever they're doing to go and support their old teammates, and it's just a very feel-good, nostalgic episode. I kind of mentally sorted the characters into three groups. The high school kids, the college kids, and then there are a few characters who are just off doing their own thing. Sosuke has been using this time to, finally, properly rehabilitate his shoulder. There's a rushed, fairly drama-less surgery plotline, and everything goes well, so he now has the potential to compete at a professional level again. Ikuya's brother Natsuya actually had a very interesting storyline. He meets and befriends Rin in Australia and tells him he's been traveling the world as a freelance swimmer. He enters any competition offering prize money and uses those winnings to continue his travels. Ultimately, this will lead him to get back into the more mainstream competitions, actually competing against his brother, and I just found it very interesting. It was actually a lifestyle I would have expected more from Haru. Speaking of... On the college side of things, everyone's looking towards competing at the world level. I'm not going to pretend I'm super well versed in what that actually means as far as swimming is concerned, aside from the Olympics themselves. But the first step, and the goal everyone's striving towards in this season, is the All Japan Tournament, which to my understanding is a qualifier of sorts. The swimmers' performances there will determine who gets chosen to represent their country in future higher level tournaments. And if you don't believe things were rushed, even Reen's screen time was skimped on. He has his own competition in Australia where he has to beat the base time to qualify, and all we get to see of it is a text from his sister that everything went well and that he's coming back to Japan. Meanwhile, Makoto started his studies in sports education and already has a part-time job coaching little kids at a local swim club. And it was a little sad to realize he wouldn't be competing in anything this season, but he gets a close-up view of everything, supporting his friends, and changes his own dream, deciding he wants to be a personal trainer himself, the kind who can get kids to this level and beyond. 
And I mean, while working with kids did seem kind of perfect for Makoto, I thought his little storyline this season was refreshing and realistic. I don't remember what the actual numbers are, but I do know the statistic of college students who change their major at least once before they graduate is really high. It feels like he's growing, and I like that. Anyway, everyone at least makes it to the All Japan competition, which the writers used as an excuse to introduce even more characters. The only one who really stuck with me was this Swedish swimmer who currently holds a world record in freestyle. He and Haru seem to have similar temperaments, and I'm interested to see what happens there. I mentioned at the end of Season 2 that I wasn't sure what I thought about Haru's new dream of competing professionally. It just felt like someone else's dream being forced onto him. It still kind of feels like Haru just wants to swim, and following this path is the way he gets to do it. But there are a few instances we see in this season of Haru getting competitive, and intimidated by the competition even, which was new for him. But I don't know. One thing I definitely felt was missing from this season was some soliloquy or inner monologue or something from Haru about how he actually feels about this shift in his goals and outlook. If the end of this review feels like it kind of just drops off, it's because Dive to the Future kind of just drops off. It's not that I'm holding back the spoilers at the very end, it's that we don't know yet how the results of the All Japan tournament turned out. We don't even get to see Rin and Haru's race this season. I mean, by the time we were about two-thirds of the way through, I could tell that this season wasn't going to wrap up in a way that felt complete. It couldn't, there just wasn't time. This felt like an in-between season. Twelve episodes that were just setting up the real story of their college days and their adult lives. So the saving grace of this whole thing was the little end card after the credits, letting us know that Free would be returning in 2020. All in all, Dive to the Future has been my least favorite season so far, but that doesn't really mean anything drastic. It felt like an in-between season that bit off more than it could chew for only having 12 episodes, but I still loved getting to see the next step to the story, and I'm even more excited to see what'll come out two years from now. I'm hoping for a season four, but I'd settle for a really well done movie too. That's about it for what I'd consider my proper review. If you want to stick around for part two of my Hiori rant, be warned that we're going to get into shipping territory. So I can halfway accept the way they wrap up Ikuya's half of the early drama. Like, I get it. We're working with a bunch of dorks who can't comprehend what their emotions mean outside of a swimming context. I'll take what I can get. But that is not at all the vibe I got from Hiori, at any point in the series. As this conflict is wrapping up, people keep telling Hiori that he just needs to swim with Haru and then he'll understand. And I guess you could twist this to say that this was always advice about Ikuya and understanding him better. And that's basically my point. I don't buy that Hiyori was so moved by swimming with Haru that he was just immediately ready to put aside all his animosity, because I never got the impression that Hiyori really cared about swimming. As far as Hiyori was concerned, it was always about Ikuya. So while we're on that note, the shipping fodder in this season has never been less subtle, so you know of course it's all directed at the one couple I don't really care about. Ikuya's big thing is that he's obsessed with the story of The Little Mermaid, the original version where she doesn't get a happy ending. Ikuya, of course, sees himself as the suffering mermaid, but Hiyori lets us know, pretty clearly, that he's the mermaid, giving up everything for the sake of the one he loves, while Ikuya, the clueless prince, only has eyes for the girl he mistakenly believes was the one to save him, Haru in this case. I know the fans, like me, who get involved in the shipping game get accused of reading too deeply into things, but in this case, it's a stretch to say there's anything platonic about this comparison. I don't buy it. After the drama's resolved and Ikuya reconnects properly with his friends, Hiyori kinda just fades into the background of their group. It's actually kind of funny. He seems surprised himself that he's apparently just one of them now. But then I guess I shouldn't be surprised. That's kind of just how this group works. 
And that is the real end. If I have one worry for season 4, it's that the pacing will continue on in this rushed, choppy way, and there are likely to be even more characters introduced as the series continues. And even if the pacing does get ironed out, there were events in this season that were mostly skipped over that we can never get back, so that is disappointing. But I believe I once said I'd be willing to ride the free train for as long as it wants to run, and that has not changed. So I'll be there for season 4 or the movie or whatever's coming out in 2020. Thank you for watching.